The most advanced adventure from the 1980s wasn't what you're probably thinking. Yes, of course Final Fantasy was incredible and trailblazing, and of course Dragon Warrior, Dragon Quest, whatever, really set the bar. But this lesser known game was raising the bar immediately after it was set. The game that was way ahead of its time, of course, was Fantasy Star for the Sega Master System. Fantasy Star, this epic RPG, came out in 1987 and totally blew minds. It was like nothing people had ever seen before on consoles, and it set a new standard for RPGs that no other game could touch at the time. So what put this game so far ahead of its competition? How is this game more advanced than the legendary Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest? Well, that story starts with its development. Fantasy Star was released just two days after Final Fantasy for the NES, so the development of this game was happening at the same time. Hey, there are no inspirations from Final Fantasy here, but it was definitely influenced by the Dragon Quest series, which was on its second game before Fantasy Star first appeared. Sega, seeing the trending of RPGs and predicting the wild popularity that RPGs would eventually enjoy, decided that they had to jump on the bandwagon too. After all, Square was working on Final Fantasy at this point, and Falcom was working on the E series. Something that I didn't know at the time before reading up a bit and studying a bit on this about the production of this game, Sega knew that their market share was bad compared to Nintendo's, so they were unlikely to find some third-party software developer friends for this. So instead, they turned inward and asked a couple of dudes, Kataro Hayashida of Alex Kidd fame and Yuji Naka, who would later go on to create Sonic the Hedgehog. They found these fellows to create the game, and they gave them complete control over the project, which the team later noted as being part of the success of the game. Imagine that. Allow video game developers to realize their vision and they'll turn out excellence. Who would have thought? There were several other computer RPGs that influenced the game, including the Western-developed Wizardry and Ultima series. The game also draws inspiration from Star Wars, seeking to replicate the idea of old touches like medieval fantasy elements along with science fiction ideas like spaceships. And so Fantasy Star was developed by Sega's legendary R&D 2 team. This is the incredible team that brought to the Master System Fantasy Zone, Ease, Wonder Boy and Monsterland, multiple Alex Kidd games, and would later bring to the Mega Drive Altered Beast, Ghouls and Ghosts, and of course, Fantasy Star 2 and 3. To say that this team had a pedigree is no joke. Released for the Sega Master System in 1987, Fantasy Star was a monumental achievement that showcased the true potential of console RPGs. At a time when most RPGs were confined to simplistic graphics and often non-animated combat, Fantasy Star shattered expectations with its stunning visuals, epic storyline, and revolutionary gameplay mechanics. One of the most striking aspects of Fantasy Star was its breathtaking graphics, and this truly set Fantasy Star apart. Okay, okay, so by today's standard, this might not be that impressive. But consider who the contemporaries were. The Famicom and NES might have been the best selling system on the block, both abroad and locally, but the Master System had something the NES didn't. Raw processing power. The Sega Master System, despite being the underdog in sales, had generally double the processing speed of the NES, six times the RAM and eight times the video RAM. And buddy, did they put this power to use. Utilizing advanced programming techniques and taking full advantage of the Master System's hardware capabilities, the game presented players with vibrant and detailed environments that were unmatched in their richness and depth. I'm not dogging on Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest, those games are amazing, and honestly, I find them to be the superior series myself, but the facts are the facts, folks. This game was impressive. From the towering skyscrapers to the futuristic cityscape, to the sprawling dungeons filled with menacing creatures and shown to us in this wild maze exploring 3D effect, every location in Fantasy Star fell alive and immersive, drawing players deep into the, its fantastical world through some graphics that were sincerely second to none on 8 big consoles at the time. I could sit here and tell you how amazing these things were, but it's so much more effective to show you. Let's just look at some of these graphics.
From the simplest aspect, look at these incredible cutscene sprites. Each one is so richly detailed that it looks more like an early 16-bit game rather than a product of an 8-bit console. Consider, too, the combat animations. At a time when battle animations were so sparse, Fantasy Star delivered us this. The way that the enemies animate and move is so, so ahead of its time. Some of this looks better even than the Super Nintendo enemies in battle. This, this is one of the most impressive aspects graphically, but I want to mention the thing that, although simple by today's standards, truly blew my mind. Exploring the dungeons. What is this witchcraft? Exploring dungeons in this game is so impressively animated from a first person perspective. Notice the way it looks as if you were truly walking through a hallway. It gives almost a 3D perspective to the exploration and this, the first time I saw it, made my brain juices just leak out. Not only was Fantasy Star set in a futuristic setting, it clearly was the future. The graphics in Fantasy Star were obviously a cut above the rest, way, way beyond what was being offered on consoles at the time. But Fantasy Star wasn't just a feast for the eyes. It also introduced groundbreaking gameplay mechanics and design choices that set it apart from other RPGs of its time. It's a turn-based RPG, for sure. So you're not going to see anything regarding that, but, but there are some pretty awesome other things to consider. Console RPGs at the time took inspiration from D&D regarding making characters. You can sort of put your personality into the character and make decisions based around their personalities, but Fantasy Star chose to go with predetermined characteristics, abilities, and personalities for its characters. While this seems like a bummer, as we're often championing character building even to this day, this allowed for specific character growth in the story. It allowed for the writers to tell a very detailed and specific story which included sort of an almost forced character development. In contrast, when people are given the rights and opportunities to choose every aspect of their character growth, they may fail to make such compelling characters. It's a shame, but it's true. Fantasy Star had a story to tell and it told that story well. We have lots, lots more to cover in this video, but let me encourage you, if you're enjoying this video and haven't checked out my channel before, consider giving it a look. There's plenty of other retro content on there that you will also enjoy. Moving on. What have I done? One of the standout features, which is also a graphics thing, is the 3D dungeon crawling. This piece is so far ahead of its time. Everything else at the time was more like the overworld top-down exploration like you see in the beginning of this game. Throwing in the 3D dungeons was a graphical flex on everything else at the time, but it was also a cool design choice. These dungeons are a bit twisty and odd to navigate, so honestly, the best way to play if you're playing on the original version, is to draw maps of the dungeons to help you navigate. There's just something about taking graph paper and mapping out your own map that is just... It's neat. Of course, you could just look these up as well if you're not into that, but there's certainly a crowd out there that appreciates these sort of maps and the near necessity in having one to navigate a difficult, winding dungeon. Oh, but there's more. Sure, Final Fantasy had you sailing the ship, but Fantasy Star has multiple land and air transports. Of course, the space transport between planets is automated, so that's not that exciting, but it's still awesome to see this. But the navigation with the other overland vehicles is definitely ahead of its time as well. Look at these things. Oh, and by the way, you heard me correctly. In Fantasy Star, you weren't just traveling continent to continent. You were traveling between space stations and different planets. I know this is not a terribly difficult implementation, but it did wonders for the scope of the game. Sure, it's great to travel between continents and see diverse lands, but the ability to travel between planets and spaceports certainly broadens that scope, making this game, again, feel as if it were out of this world, quite literally. Of course, you can't talk about an RPG without talking about the story, right? Fantasy Star is set in the star system called Algol, which has three different planets. Palma, the green and lush one, Matavia, the dry and barren one, and Dezorus, the icy and desolate one. The ruler of Algol is King Lassic, who started out as a good guy, but then turned into a mean, crazy tyrant. The people tried to rebel, but Lassic's rule was just too strong. One of the rebels, Nero, got killed by Lassic's forces, and his sister, Alice, vowed to get revenge. Alice, a woman, 
Fantasy! It was pretty ahead of its time to have a female protagonist. Most of the other RPGs at the time were dominated by male leads, so having a strong female lead rather than just a damsel in distress set this game above others. It really made it stand out. This young woman puts together a group of adventurers including a warrior named Odin, a wizard named Noah, and a cat creature named Meow. The story stretches across these three planets where you meet people, fight enemies, and find special items to help them step up to Lassic. I won't spoil the rest of the game and story, but that's definitely not the ending. Pretty solid story for the time, right? Again, don't get me wrong, I love Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest. That's pretty freaking simple for a story, and it's all you need. I love Final Fantasy, and I honestly think it's a banger of a story, and honestly maybe more compelling than this one. But the combination of features, not just the story, puts Fantasy Star just a bit ahead of the rest of its competition at the time. It truly is the most advanced adventure from the 80s. In the years since its release, Fantasy Star has rightfully earned its place as a classic of the RPG genre, inspiring countless games and leaving an indelible mark on the medium as a whole. Its stunning visuals, innovative gameplay mechanics, and epic storyline continue to captivate players to this day cementing his status as the most advanced RPG of his time and a timeless masterpiece that will be remembered for generations to come. Fantasy Star was just what Sega needed at the time to continue to compete with the likes of other companies. The game was praised for its beautiful graphics, the likes that many hadn't seen outside the arcades. It truly set a new standard for visuals. One publication went as far as to say that anything Nintendo offered at the time held in comparison regarding visuals. Even now, many players, including myself, still champion this game. It's not as complex as RPGs nowadays, and it's obviously not as beautiful as modern RPGs, but when you consider the game at the time of its release, in the context of its heyday, you can't deny that it wasn't a cut above the rest. If you haven't played this game, it's available via emulation, of course, of course you can buy it physically, or you can play a version on the Switch that has some great quality of life upgrades to the Sega Ages version. That's the one that I would recommend. Gaming discourse is important, folks. In consideration of the legacy of Fantasy Star, let us remember the boldness and brilliance of its creators, who dared to dream of a world where anything was possible. Heck, who made a world where so much was possible. These folks were given free range to create whatever they desired, and they took that liberty and created an amazing game that is still impressive nearly 40 years later. And that's special.